In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we are coming to you over the airwaves from St. Mary's Parish in Bangor, Wisconsin. I also, I am the pastor here, and my name is Father Doug Robertson. This is Deacon Bob Zitlow. We also serve at the parish of St. Leo the Great in West Salem. As we uh, come together and we celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us, er, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that, with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king, to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request, so God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Comfort me, oh 
according to your promise to your servants. Let your compassion come to me that I may live. For your law is my delight. Lord, I love your commands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant finding a fine pearl. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Where and how do we find the wisdom and the treasure in the kingdom of God? Today's reading placed before us the contrast between the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. Solomon asked God for an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. Paul does not use the word understanding or wisdom, but he says, for those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Such conformity to the Son certainly involves living by God's wisdom. In today's Gospel, Jesus compares the kingdom to a pearl and a treasure, both worth seeking at all costs, reaffirming that God's way is better than that of the world's way. So how do we attain the kingdom of God? God has given us the perfect liturgy, the Mass to find that treasure. We may have asked ourselves in the past, why do we gather to worship at Mass? What is an expectation or commandment? What is the Mass supposed to do for us? What are we seeking when we come to church? For some, of course, it's just habit. For others, it's a comfort, a reassurance of God's care, For some, no doubt, it's an insurance against eternal damnation. For some, it offers important social contact. But the purpose for attending Mass should be the furtherance of the kingdom of God. The kingdom is not a place here or there. 
the kingdom exists wherever people align their minds and hearts and lives with God and wherever people allow God to reign in them. We gather to allow God to change us, to make us better, to conform us more fully to the image of Jesus. And how does the Mass do that? There are many ways. Certainly, the proclamation and preaching of the Word of God is crucial. It calls us, challenges us, comforts us, teaches us, and encourages us. It is in the receiving of the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist. St. Francis of Assisi wrote that God loves us so much that God hides under the little form of bread in order to give himself totally to us. So, in turn, we should hold nothing back. We receive Christ in the Eucharist. Christ receives us in prayer and in what we do for others, being with our brothers and sisters in good times and in bad. It is not so much in what we plan to do or say, but simply being present and aware of each other and of God. In those moments, finding God's wisdom and his kingdom. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us confidently approach the Father with our prayers of petition. For all Christian people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are unable to attend Mass in their parish church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who call upon Christ in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions submitted by our viewers at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, in your great mercy, turn toward us, and in your great love, answer us according to your will, through Christ our Lord.
else to do. See what sort of proves what sacrifice. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all in his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life, and lead us to, renew, to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory, glory O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is always a privilege for us to gather as a parish for Sunday Mass, but even more to have uh, guests with us. And so we're happy to be with you uh, over the television, but we ask you to pray for us as we keep you in our prayers as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
Thank you for tuning in to Sunday Mass. Thank you for being with us as we celebrate Mass each week, especially for the sick and the homebound. We ask you that if it is within your power to contribute to financially to these Masses, that you do so, and we would certainly appreciate it. Be assured of our thoughts and our prayers for you and your families. God be with you. Mayo Clinic Specialty Care. One of America's top neonatologists and the NICU team improve the odds for at-risk newborns. Technology brings specialists to hospital rooms at the speed of light. Advanced technology makes incredible surgical precision possible. It's here in La Crosse. Mayo Clinic Health System.